regionality. So all of you are really good at selling Oregon wine now. Uh, you've been well trained. You understand the soils. You know the geography. So what we're going to do is have a little bit of a deep dive with Eugenia into specifically where the vineyards are and how Chardonnay behaves in the Willamette Valley. Uh, you can see, I think we have a series of maps and the first one is the West Coast. Um, I'm amused that we're still showing this, but for those of us who've been doing this a long time, we used to literally stand up and put an arm up and show people what the West Coast looked like because they thought Oregon was, I don't know, next to Canada or something. I think we're over that. I'm pretty sure we're over that. I think everybody knows where Oregon is, and I know you do. So then we have the Willamette Valley. I think you're all very familiar with this, as Gillian said. You understand how we got to the Willamette Valley. You understand our different soils. And so we're going to talk about those those particular vineyards that we own and the Chardonnay that we grow there. So here's the AVA map. I think you're all familiar with those too, although we keep expanding and adding. So you have to keep on your toes to keep up with that. And here's the map that shows our Chardonnay vineyards in the Willamette Valley. One of our largest plantings of Chardonnay is on the Maple Grove vineyard. It's a new planting in 2014 and 15, and we've been making wine from that vineyard for three years now. It is the backbone of the Willikensee Willamette Valley bottling and the new Siduri bottling. It is only an Willamette Valley AVA at this point in time, but we will see that changing as more vineyards are planted down there. It's a new area for the Willamette Valley and we're one of the pioneers down in that area. Very close to that is the Zena Crown Vineyard. We have uh, just under 10 acres planted there. And all I can tell you is that every winemaker is fighting over those grapes because we all know that the Zena Crown is absolutely one of the jewels of the Willamette Valley. And we are the proud owners of that, of that site. And you've seen it in Pinot Noir and now you're gonna start seeing it in Chardonnay. So if you move to the northern end of the Willamette Valley, where you have our very famous Grand Moraine Vineyard and the exquisite Chardonnays that Shane has been producing off of that site, you really can feel the sedimentary soils in, in that wine. Shane would call it even gravelly, and I love that expression, and those are the tannins. And then we have Jury Hills. This is also a new planting. When we inherited it, it did have uh, 25 acres of planted vineyard, but all Pinot Noir. It is in the Dundee Hills, high elevation site, and really a stunning location. So we picked the best spots on that vineyard, and we've got just under 10 tons of Chardonnay there as well. We will see some of that goes to Eric, and some of that goes to Siduri, and we will, as those vines age, we will continue to find a program that really spotlights that vineyard, but for now they're young vines. And then finally, we have the Willikensia Estate. We're all familiar with that vineyard and it was planted over the last 20 years, but most of it 20 years ago. So the beauty of that vineyard is some of those well-aged vines. So there was some Chardonnay there, very small program. And we've enhanced that program. Eric has picked a spot at the very top of the hill. We butted over old vines. So we lost a year of production, but what we get is that deep rooted system and now Chardonnay there. So you'll see uh, our ability to increase the volume on the estate Chardonnay. And some of that Chardonnay, of course, goes into the Willamette Valley as well. We were at that Chardonnay symposium. Mimi from Bethel Heights said it. You have to sacrifice some of your great Pinot Noir spots mm -hmm. if you're going to make great Chardonnay. And I thought that that was spot on. Mm -hmm. That's, that is a true change in uh, the way we approach Chardonnay in Oregon now. Pinot Gris was always given secondary sites, and we all understand why you would do that. And that mentality sort of became white wines. And we've had to make a huge shift in our thinking of, no, the best site on your property should probably go to Chardonnay.